Good morning, everyone. Here we are at Zora Lutheran Church in Perrysburg, Ohio, and we welcome you. Today is Christ the King Sunday, and so you'll be hearing more about that as the, as the worship service goes along. Let us pray. Come, let us bow down and worship before our Lord, God our Maker. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. That was from the psalm for today. And now I'd like us to spend a little time with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, your sins are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. And let us now pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, so good for you to have joined us on this last Sunday of the church year as we claim Jesus as Lord and King. Join me in Psalm 95, the first seven verses. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to God with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great king above all gods. In your hands are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is, his, uh, the sea is yours, for you have made it. And, the, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Alleluia. Our holy gospel comes from Matthew chapter 25. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. The king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will say, truly I say to you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not give me clothing, sick or in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, was, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And he will say to them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Oh, what a text. We are at the end of the church year. Oh, what a text. What does it mean to be Christian? What does it mean to be Christian? It's tough these days because there are so many different understandings of what it means to be Christian. We find that people are divided even in the Christian community by certain beliefs or by traditions or things that they hold true and others are false or things that are actions. And, and, then, and then folks step away from the Christian church because they see those who are supposed to love each other arguing and fighting over stuff that may not be that important. What does it mean to be Christian? And in America, it's all too easy for people to view their faith through their political views and get their understanding of what their faith is all about, more often from their political party or their connection with political party than scripture. Does it mean to be just a good person, kind and nice and loving? Does it mean just to be a churchgoer? Once you got the church thing going on, you got it down? Do we want to make sure that, we, that Christians are people who worship like me, who look like me, who live like me? And therefore, those who don't really aren't. 
what does it mean to follow Jesus? So we come to our text today, and there's a key word I want us to keep remembering. And uh, when I put my hands over my head and say compassion, I'd invite you to say that along with me. Here we go. Compassion. That's really a key that I see coming out of this text. Jesus has the story of the last days, and it looks like there's a shepherd who separates sheep from goats. I don't know much about sheep and goats, except that they are different. They have different things that they like to do and different ways to be handled. So sheep and goats can be separated for many reasons. But because they look differently, it's easy for the shepherd to separate them. But Jesus separates those who are called who, who, in, into two different groups, and, and, and they're both surprised. They're both surprised. He says, I am the one who was fed. I am the one who was welcomed. I am the one who was clothed. I am the one who was visited. Or I wasn't the one fed or clothed or welcomed and visited. They're both surprised. Because Jesus is saying, let's have a little compassion on those who are the least of these. Those who are children. Those who are sick. Those who are cast away those who are unknown to us, but all fully known to Jesus. One of the gospel things I find in this text is that even the little things that we do to help others, even the little things that we do that maybe no one knows about make a difference. The things of grace and forgiveness and love, the way we treat our neighbor or our friend or the stranger, the little things we do the words we use, the actions we take, make a difference. What does it mean to be Christian? Compassion is a big thing. At the end of this text, we have the next verses. Uh, the, the are read, after two days, the Passover is coming, Jesus said. And the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. So here we are, right smack dab now, into Monday, Thursday. This is what the Roman Empire did to Jesus. They crucified him. This is what the power of the day did to Jesus. They crucified him. Empires today keep working on their own power, keep trying to not let the grace and forgiveness and peace of Jesus work. Jesus comes to us with a different kind of kingship. Jesus calls us to a different responsibility. Jesus comes to us on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus comes to us with a promise and hope. That in this cross and resurrection of his very presence, we find new life. And we are called to, right, compassion. We are called to that understanding of living a life that is different than those who only seek power or those who only seek control or only seek stuff for themselves or only want to hoard the world's riches, but rather to reach out on the cross. His arms were wide open for me, for you, and for all of them. In those open arms, there is grace. There is hope even in COVID days. There is unlimited forgiveness and freedom and joy. Part of the answer to what it means to be Christian, or really the primary answer for me, what does it mean to be a disciple, is to know and realize that we are daughters or sons of the king. We are princes and princesses. We are the children of the God Most High. We are beloved. And nothing can change that. And God's love is so much more awesomer, I did say that word, so much more awesomer than anyone else can understand because God's love is just open and wide and welcoming to all kinds of people, to all kinds of people I know and don't know, I welcome and don't welcome. God's love even is for them as well as for me. So that's key when I come to this text. Everything hinges on the cross and the love that we see coming out of that. But part of the issue also calls us to what does it mean to be a disciple and how to live as a Christian. 
You may remember that one day a lawyer came to Jesus and said, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, well, there's really two and they're equal. One, love your neighbor, I'm sorry, one, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Number two, just as important, love your neighbor as yourself. On these, all the law depends. So, you know, you cannot love God without loving neighbor. And the way you care for your neighbor, we find in this text, is how you care for Jesus. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We've heard that golden rule. How we want to be treated is how we treat each other, because that's, in the essence, where Jesus is. And the God who created heaven and earth, and the God who was wrapped in flesh at Christmas in, 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 the, in the manger, and the God in Jesus who taught and lived and forgave and loved, when it came to Monday, Thursday night, took off the power that he had and washed his disciples' feet. The master doing the servant act. This is who God is. This is God's character, not to be Lord at all, even though he is king over all, but to be the kind of king who is servant, shepherd, who kneels down and wipes away every tear from every eye. In the 1920s, uh, World War I was coming to its conclusion. Spanish flu was hanging around a little bit. The world was embroiled with nationalism and consumerism and individualism and all sorts of other isms. And Pope Pius at that point was the one who said, we got to speak a different message. So he created the concept of Christ the King Sunday as a way to say in the midst of all this world, we speak of a God who is truly Lord of all and King of kings, the one who has all creation in hands of grace, the one whose love never ends, the one who calls us to compassion. So this is a relatively new festival in our church here. But it does cause us to reflect on whose values we follow and whose guidelines we follow and where our allegiance lies. Our politics, just our country, our heritage, our small little groups, our families, or is it really the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Who do we serve? So God comes to us at every level. God comes to wipe away the tear. God comes in forgiveness and peace. God is there with those who are in need. God asks us to open our eyes to see that those who are in need or those who are alone or those who are outcast or those who are in the dark or the sick or the prisoner or, yea, even those of different political views and certainly those of many multi-hued races, God says, open your eyes to see them as I do, as your beloved sisters and brothers. Open your eyes to see the love that I have for them, God says. Open your eyes, people of my love, and be folks who love the others and understand compassion and know that God's love is with them. Someday, someday Christ the King will return and we will see his lordship and his servant grace will be there for all and there will be an end to suffering and pain and grief and sorrow forever. But until day, that's our task, to, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to be the people of compassion, to see Jesus and serve him and others. Blessings to you, my sisters and brothers. Amen.
At this time of offering, let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance, and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. So I have a few announcements today, uh, Zora community, and if you're a guest, you know you're welcome too. First thing I'd like to share is we will be having a Thanksgiving Eve service at 7 p.m. in person right here in our sanctuary. We also will be having a service that will be online for you to view on YouTube. And if for some reason it gets canceled, I'm sure that we will be able to notify you. You know, this service, here is in the sanctuary and what a blessing it is to be worshiping with you here in this place. Also I wanted to remind you that Advent season is coming and that we are going to be having some very special Advent activities. Please check the Z-Blast so that you may be a part of them. I also want to give great thanksgiving for your generosity We've just had a stewardship focus, and we had many, many people turn in their intent cards, and I just want you to know that we all appreciate you and the many ways that you give and bless others. We want to lift up in prayer. We want to lift up uh, Gail and Ann Lobrick, and we pray for health concerns for both of them, and uh, others that are in your hearts We'll be praying for them and their health at this time. All right. We do have a time of prayer now, and we pray for our church and our world and our loved ones. Let us pray. Christ the King, we are forever grateful for you. You teach us how to live our lives. May we be a reflection of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, 
We thank you for the beautiful lands that you give us. You bless us with such a wonderful place to live. And also, Lord, you give us the sun and the moon and the stars, the galaxy, the universe. And we do pray, Lord, for the safety of all of our astronauts that are up in space right now. Help them to stay healthy and to return home soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, help us to draw near to all people who are suffering. Help us, Lord, to be able to serve them in the many ways they need. And you know, Lord, at this time of the pandemic, there are folks who have lost their homes and their jobs and loved ones. We pray, Lord, that you draw near to them and comfort them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, lead us, guide us, unite us, bring us peace in this world and especially in our country. And we do lift up in prayer, Lord, our president, our president-elect, all the government officials. We lift up in prayer our church leaders, and the administrators of our schools. Lord, help them in these times to make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, we ask you to draw near to all those who need to be comforted at this moment. We believe in you and we trust in you. And Lord, we know that you are with us. We know this already. But draw especially near right now to those who are sick. Draw near, Lord, to those who have lost loved ones. Draw near, Lord, to those who are worried or weary or weak. And Lord, in these times that you are with us, help us to have other people with us who can help us get by each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you know that many people have died from the coronavirus, and many people during this time have also died from other things. We lean on you for strength. And Lord, we thank you for your promise of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, you, Lord, who care about all of us, we commend these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you today and every day of your life. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.